Hello, AP Biology students, and welcome to today's lesson over gel electrophoresis. And what I'm gonna do for this is go over the gel electrophoresis virtual lab. For those of you who maybe don't have Flash on, installed in your laptop, desktop, phone. So guys, what I'm gonna do is go through this step-by-step, step, giving you an opportunity to fill in all the answers on your activity handout and learn what gel electrophoresis is, how we use it, and what it does. Now, I do want to begin by telling you guys this is an, a lab that we would be doing in the classroom if we were in our class, in our lab. Uh, we actually do this part of our biotechnology unit, and we kind of set it up as a whodunit crime scene investigation where you're given DNA samples of different suspects, and then you need to run it through a gel electrophoresis to be able to figure out a DNA fingerprint, to figure out who did this crime. Now, for this virtual lab, it's a little bit simpler. It's mostly focusing on the technique. How exactly do you set this up? What is it used for? What is its purpose? So that's what we're gonna look at. So guys, on your handout, you have a pre-lab um, and it kind of gives you this first prompt here. So notice here we have, you are holding a small plastic tube with some clear liquid in it. By the way, guys, we call these plastic tubes micro centrifuge tubes. Now, it says there you've been told that the liquid contains DNA strands of several different lengths. So there's a bunch of DNA in there and they're different pieces. They're different pieces and they're different sizes. Some might be really big, some small, maybe some medium size. It's our job to figure out what these lengths are, how will you do it? So we're gonna press forward. But guys, before we do that, notice the pre-lab. There's two questions on there. Uh, one says, what would have been used to cut the DNA into different size fragments and how does this work? And then the other one, how could researchers amplify? In other words, make huge amounts of these copies of the DNA sample to be able to perform extensive analysis on it. Guys, both of those are not gonna be answered in this virtual lab, but those answers are in your notes. Guys, in your biotechnology notes, they talk about these. Make sure you go back and review. Guys, I'll give you a hint right now. Restriction enzymes, DNA restriction enzymes, and PCR. Go read about those. Those are kind of the answers, kind of describe that. But guys, let's go ahead and begin looking at gel electrophoresis. And guys, I'll try to go slow. I'll try to pause where you might be. want to look for an answer or fill something in in your handout. <laughs> So notice our prompt in the bottom, it says, if DNA strands were as big as your shoelaces, you could sort them by hand into groups and measure them. But of course, they're not the size of our shoelaces. They're microscopic. But here they're giving you just an idea. Some could be really small. Some can be mediums and could be really, really big. So of course, we want to separate these by their size. That's what gel electrophoresis is. But let's go ahead and press this forward button. <laughs> Now notice here it says, but DNA strands are molecules are, but DNA strands are molecules so tiny that you can't see them under underneath most microscopes. You would need an electron microscope to really see DNA. But there is a way to sort and measure the DNA strands in our tube, even though you can't see them or touch them. How do we do that? That's gel electrophoresis. That's what gel electrophoresis does. It separates fragments of DNA by their size on how big they are. So in our bottom prompt, it says here, scientists use gel electrophoresis whenever they need to sort DNA strands according to length. The technique is also useful for separating other types of molecules like proteins as well. How does that work? That's what we're gonna find out. But guys, look at this picture. Hey, you, you've, you've used this tool before called the micropipetter. Hopefully you guys actually became skillful using this earlier this semester. So this picture here is a picture of what a gel looks like. It's a rectangular piece, not very big, but it's like a rectangular piece of like jello. So notice here, the gel is a filter that sorts the DNA strands. It's like a sponge made of jello with many small holes in it. 
guys, the jello itself, you don't see these holes, but it's like a matrix of like switch cheese holes that are gonna allow DNA to kind of go through these holes where some pieces of DNA that are really small are gonna be able to navigate through these holes a lot quicker. Bigger pieces take longer to navigate through those. So let's go ahead and press forward and get some of this information. So notice, it says, notice uh, it says here, we place the DNA samples into holes at one end of the gel. We call these holes wells. These are wells. This is where we use a micropipetter to load DNA samples into these wells. And notice they're at one end of the gel because the DNA is gonna travel to this other end. Now, when we do our gel electrophoresis, we do run it through a current. Notice it says electrophoresis is how we push the DNA strands through the gel filter. By adding an electrical current, we can make the DNA move. Remember, DNA is negative, so it's going to be attracted to this positive end, repelled by this negative end, and it's going to push the DNA through the gel. Here you kind of see the DNA navigating through the gel from one side, from the top, all the way to the bottom. So notice it says shorter strands move through the holes in the gel more quickly than long strands. So these, notice these are small pieces. They're able to go through the gel pretty fast. Over time, the shorter strands in the sample will move further away from the starting point, which is our wells up here, than the larger strands. Notice the larger strands don't go very far. It takes them a lot longer to navigate through those switch cheese holes. So DNA strands of the same length will move at the same speed and end up grouped together. And this way, the DNA strands in the sample kind of sort themselves out, once again, by size. Smaller pieces go pretty far. Larger pieces kind of stay behind. They don't travel very far down the gel. Now, when we look at a gel, we usually need to stain the gel in order for us to see the DNA because notice here in the bottom says, staining the sorted groups of DNA molecules, uh, DNA makes them visible to the naked eye. Although we can't see a single DNA strand, we could see large groups of stained DNA strands. These, are group, uh, these groups show up as bands in a gel. So these are bands of DNA. And once again, Notice these bands of DNA that are a little bit further down, these are going to be smaller pieces, where these up here are going to be larger pieces. Like these pieces are probably like 10,000 bases pair, base pair long, where these maybe are maybe 1,000 bases long, not very big at all, because smaller pieces, once again, go through the gel a lot faster, go a lot more further down. <laughs> Hmm, interesting. So guys, now it's time for us to make our gel. And there's five steps that we're gonna do. We're gonna make the gel, set up the gel apparatus, load the DNA samples into the gel, hook up the electrical current and run the gel, and stain the gel and analyze the results. So that's what we're gonna do. It's our turn to run a gel. We would be doing this in the classroom if we were in the class. But guys, this is a virtual lab that I think does a pretty decent job of giving us that experience. So guys, this is where we're gonna answer a lot of questions on our handout. So guys, keep an eye on your handout, and when you see something, make sure you write it in. You could pause the video and kind of fill in your answer. Okay, so first, notice, we have our equipment to make our gel. And this is what we need. We need powdered aridose, we need buffer, a flask, a microwave, a gel mold, and a gel comb. And we have all those ingredients right here, and now we're ready to make our gel. So let's go ahead and do our first step. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so first thing we have to do is notice we have to pour some, a small amount of Aragos, which is kind of a type of sugar into a flask. Uh, Aragos is a dry powder similar to gelatin, but made from seaweed. Um, it's kind of a sugar protein based material. So guys, notice it's made from seaweed. I believe that might be an answer to one of your questions. So let's go ahead and grab a spoonful. And once again, notice it's seaweed arago, so it's made from seaweed. And there we go, pouring it into a flask. Okay, now we're going to pour a buffer in there. It's usually called TBE buffer. It's a TRIS uh, EDTA, which is a detergent buffer. And pretty much it's a salt kind of solution in there. There's a salt in there. Um, there's one that's going to detergent to help denature some of the DNA. And it also helps electrical charge flow through the gel. So guys, let's go ahead and grab this and pour some in there. Oops, carefully. So now we've loosely put some plastic wrap over the top of the flask to prevent the liquid from bowling over. Let's go ahead and open the microwave. Let's go ahead and put the flask in the microwave. And we're gonna heat it, we're gonna let it boil up until the arrow is completely dissolved and you can't see a single speck of it left. So we remove the plastic wrap and then we usually let it cool. You know, it's boiling when we take it out. We want to let it cool to about 60 degrees. And then once there, once it's a little bit where you could actually touch it with your hand without burning it, you pour it into our gel mode. Notice there's some tape at the ends to prevent the liquid from spilling over. So we're going to pour the melted arrogos into the mixture of the bowl. Notice that there's tape at the ends to hold the melted Aragos, let's go ahead and probe, be careful. And notice now we have this comb that we're going to place into the gel. Actually, you could have this comb already in the gel and you could pour it in with the comb already in there or you could put the comb in afterwards. I usually will already have the comb in there, but guys, here's the key thing. What is this comb used for for making the gel? It's going to make the wells. Its job is to make those wells, those holes in the gel. That's, I believe, possibly an answer to one of your questions on there, but let's go ahead and put these in there. Okay, so once again, our well, uh, our gel comb is making the wells in our DNA, the little notches, the little holes for us to pour our DNA sample in there. We're gonna let the gel cool to about room temperature so it could solidify to like a jello consistency. This usually takes about an hour, hour and a half, but we're gonna speed up that clock so we're, we don't have to wait here for an hour. So let's go ahead and press forward. Now, once it's cooled, we're gonna take the well out so we could see, we're gonna take our gel comb out, I'm sorry, so we could see our well. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> Okay, and now we're ready to sell up uh, to set up our gel electrophoresis box. So guys, notice the things that we need. We need some more buffer. So we have more of this TBE buffer, kind of a salt solution that's going to help electricity run through the gel. We have a gel box that has some electrodes in it. And we have our gel over here, our gel that we made from our seaweed arrogos. So first thing we have to do is pour some buffer into our gel box. Now we're going to get our gel that's still in the mold. We're going to remove the tapes and then we put the whole mold into the gel box. So let's go ahead and grab that, carefully put it in. And now we're ready to load the DNA sample into our gel. Notice what we have, a micropipetter, which you guys are experts now at using. We have our gel box that we've already set up, and we have 
some samples, a DNA sample. This is the one where we have fragments of DNA that we want to find out how big those fragments are. We have what we call a DNA size standard. Uh, sometimes it's called a DNA ladder and we have loading buffer. Now we're ready to load the DNA sample into the gel. Here's what we need. We need our loading buffer, the tube of DNA that has pieces of DNA that we want to figure out the size. And we have our size standard, aka DNA ladder, a micro pipetter, and we have our electrophoresis box and a box of tips. Guys, what's wrong with this picture? That's right, these tip box, this box should be closed. You don't want to leave that open. You want to only open that when you're ready to use them. But it's okay, it's a virtual lab, it's all good. Okay, so notice we get a tip into our micropipetter. So with a clean tip, we're gonna use the micropipetter to suck up some loading buffer. We're gonna drop a little bit of loading buffer and we're gonna add it to our DNA sample. Now guys, DNA samples are prepared in a clear liquid solution that would be hard to see, pretty much transparent. So what happens, this loading buffer has a dye in it that's gonna help us be able to see our sample. It, it, definitely gives it a better view of it as it goes down the gel, but it also helps us see it as we pour it into our well. It also gives DNA some weight. It's slightly goopy. Um, it's a little bit heavier and thicker, so it actually will help the DNA drop to the bottom of the well and not just float all over the place. So we're going to go ahead and grab some of that loading buffer. And we're going to pour it just into our DNA sample. This right here already has the loading buffer. So notice, the, notice here, next you will use the micropipetter to transfer the DNA sample from your tube into the well of the gel. As the DNA sample, uh, we have to suck it up. We would change tips, but we're gonna use the same one here. They don't change it. Once again, this one already has the loading buffer in it. It's our standard. So let's go ahead and just grab some DNA sample here. And now we're ready to pour it into the well. And notice these wells are not very big. And guys, this is the most stressful part of this lab. It's where students pour a sample into these wells that are very small, very clear, kind of hard to see. So what you do is you carefully go just into the well. You don't want to go too deep because you don't want to poke the gel. You poke the gel, you lose your sample, and you rip up the gel itself. You don't want to be too outside. Don't, some students get so freaked out, they're not even in the well, and then what happens, that DNA spreads around to all these other wells in there, and you want to put it in there, release your liquid, and then you want to get out. Sometimes students get so excited that they release and they think they have an awesome job. They're like, yes, I got my DNA sample in there, but they leave the pipette tip in there and they let go of the plunger button and they suck up the sample right back up. But this is a virtual lab, no issues here. So in real life, notice the loading of the sample tools actually takes a little bit of practice. So don't be disappointed if you miss it in your first target. This is virtual, we got it in our first one. <laughs> So notice we loaded our DNA sample, but now we gotta load our standard, our DNA ladder, our DNA size standard. So let's go ahead and draw some of that up. And let's go ahead and put it into our second well. Okay, and now we are ready to set up our power supply our gel electrophoresis box, connect it all together and get ready to run power through it. And guys, there's a couple of questions here that you're gonna definitely be able to answer. So notice it says, it's time to turn on the electricity and run our gel. When you turn on the power, the black end, this one right here, will generate a negative charge. The red end right here will generate a positive charge. Together, they will pass the current through the gel. DNA has a negative charge. Remember, DNA is negative. To move the DNA through the gel, we must put the black cord, the minus, the negative charge, closest to the well. So let's go ahead and press forward. So we're gonna have to connect this right here to our minus kind of power supply. Sorry about that. Oops. So it says plug the black cord from the electrophoresis box into the matching outlet. So black. black 
red with red. And now we're ready to turn on the power supply. But notice what we've set up so far. We have, once again, our cords. Our negative goes with our negative electrode. The red goes with the red. Red, once again, goes positive. Black goes negative. Once again, our DNA is going to be right here. DNA has a negative charge. So once again, it's going to push to go this way. But guys, notice it says turn on the power supply. Let's go ahead and turn that on. <laughs> Now, in the gel box, you're going to see these wires at both ends of the gel. So right now, our gel is off and running. We could look at the gel box to see what's happening. What we do is we check for tiny air bubbles coming out of the electrodes at both ends. If you see bubbles coming at both ends, that means it's good. It's working. There's electricity running through our gel. And once again, this is our negative end. Over here is our positive end. So it's going to push that DNA to go through that gel. So guys, there's a couple of questions here that you could also answer in your handout. Once again, guys, feel free to pause the video, answer some questions, then press play. But I'm gonna go ahead and continue. So notice it says, repelled by the negative charge, the DNA moves through the gel toward the positive charge. Once again, this is negative charge. Positives down here, so it's going to push it though. It's going to be attracted to that positive charge. Short DNA strands move through the holes in the gel a lot more quickly than longer strands. Over time, shorter DNA strands will migrate further from the starting point, which are these wells, than the larger ones. We can actually see the migrating DNA bands, they're usually gray, but we can see the blue dye from the loading buffer as it migrates. So let's go ahead and press forward. So when it says here, we finish running our gel. We take the gel mode out of our gel box. We make sure we turn off the electricity. We disconnect the cords. And now it's time to analyze our DNA. But notice we can't really see them. We have to do a big step. We have to stain the gel so these bands, this DNA can become visible. So what we're gonna do is for this virtual lab, notice we are going to stain the DNA in our gel using a DNA staining solution. Now here, they use something called athenium bromide, which binds to DNA and shows up under fluorescent light. And here you see it actually binds between nitrogen bases. But guys, here's the thing. Well, athenium bromide is an awesome stain. It makes the DNA pop. Guys, it is a nasty substance. It's a carcinogen it actually causes cancer. So you've got to be very careful using this. There's no way that they would let us use ethanium bromide in high school. So we usually use something called a methyl blue or a caroline blue stain to stain our gel. The drawback, it's not as awesome as ethanium bromide. It doesn't make the DNA bands pop as much, but you still get some pretty decent results. If you ever do this at the, at the university level, you'll probably use ethidium bromide, but you, you have to be a, really careful using that. So once again, that's actually a question that you need to answer in your handout. Ethidium bromide binds between the nitrogen bases, between the lungs of the DNA, and we're gonna be able to pick it up with fluorescent light. So let's go ahead and get our gel and put it in our stain. Notice how it says yeah, it could damage your cell, so you definitely want to wear gloves when you're using ethanium bromide. Now, you let it stain, you usually put it on a little rocker or shaker that kind of just shakes back and forth, making the stain kind of just be evenly distributed through the gel. We let it stain for about an hour, hour and a half. We're going to speed up the clock so we can see our results. <laughs> Now, the last thing we need is, okay, we stain the gel, but remember, we need to see it under ultraviolet light. So what we do is we get a UV light box that shows ultraviolet light, that shines ultraviolet light. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get our gel, put it in our gel light box, our UV light box. We're going to go and hit the light switch. And what that does, it makes 
our bands pop out. First, we have our DNA sample. So guys, this was the one where we had fragments of DNA that were trying to figure out how big are these pieces. This is our DNA size standard, aka our ladder, DNA ladder. And guys, notice for our DNA sample, there were three pieces of DNA, or at least three size pieces of DNA. It looks like one of them's pretty big. Notice it didn't travel very far at all from the well. So once again, this has to be pretty big. This one over here has to be pretty small. Notice it traveled pretty far. Small pieces, once again, travel very really far, larger pieces down. Now notice it's here, you can determine the approximate length of your DNA strands in your sample. Compare the bands from your DNA sample to the actual standard, our DNA ladder, and we could come with an estimated length and base pairs for each band in our DNA sample. Now, electrophoresis cannot tell us the exact DNA lengths of DNA strands, just a good estimate. So we're gonna give it our best shot, our best guess. So guys, let's look at this. Notice this band here, it's pretty big. Notice it didn't travel very far, and it's pretty much right there even with this band, which measures 6,000 base pairs. So guys, I think this one here is 6,000 base pairs. This one's again, it's pretty much even with this one right here. Now, what about this band? Notice it's not even with one either one of these. It's pretty much right in between. It's halfway between 3,000 and 4,000 base pairs. So what's our best estimated one? I would say probably right in between 3,500 base pairs long. And then we have our last one. Guys, notice there's nothing that's right even with it, but notice we have this one as 2,000, down here is 1,000 base pairs. It's pretty much right in between. So how about we do 1,500? So we have our estimated, let's see how we did. Let's go ahead and press forward and see how our estimates came out. And it says, all of your estimates are correct. Awesome job, guys. The estimated length in base pairs for each band your DNA sample is based on how they line up with the bands of the known DNA ladder. Our top band is about 6,000 base pairs. Our second one is about 3,500 base pairs. And then our last one is about 1,500 base pairs long. So we have three fragments of DNA and those are their lengths, their estimated lengths. So guys, congratulations, you have just run your own DNA gel electrophoresis experiment. You could press forward to start over. Guys, we're gonna kind of start over. You could rewind it to the beginning. Guys, I believe you should now have an answer to every single question on this activity. Guys, if you want, you could take a screenshot of this right here. You could take a picture of it. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna require you to submit it, but just have it, just make sure that you've actually done the lab. I might ask for it. Um, so guys, this pretty much concludes this virtual gel electrophoresis lab. Now, notice this handout, there's a second one called Applying Gel Electrophoresis. Guys, I'm gonna do a separate video on that one. Hopefully that video will drop maybe on Tuesday, uh, late Tuesday, this will be on hopefully by Tuesday morning. But guys, hopefully, once again, you've answered every question. Feel free, once again, go back, rewind, listen to other parts again to get any answers you might have missed. Guys, if there's something on there that I didn't cover, that I didn't talk about, or you have more questions about, feel free to emote me, email me your questions, or ask those questions whenever we're doing a Zoom meeting. Well, guys, I think that's it for this lesson over gel electrophoresis, our virtual lab. Um, guys, I hope you guys have an awesome day.